you want to use Git and GitHub to version control your application? If so, stick around to find out how. I'm Thomas with Braintrust Digital. I'm a full stack developer obsessed with learning. If you're interested in learning full stack, please subscribe below to receive new content. I know I mentioned in the previous tutorial that we'd be working on Capistrano this week. Unfortunately, I realized we haven't yet covered Git or GitHub. These are requirements for our particular deployment. So we're gonna cover these first this week and then we'll get to the deployment next week. What is Git? Git is a version control system, meaning it's a mechanism for tracking changes across your project. Git allows you to create point in time snapshots called commits. Commits chain together to form a project history. Think of Git as a sort of developer safety net, allowing you to revert back to any point in the stored history. A history is just a timeline of commits in the order with which they occurred. Collaboration comes in the form of branches. The main line of history is referred to as the master branch. You as an individual developer or as a team of developers can create as many branches as you want. This allows you to work on different bug fixes or features. If you're working on a branch of a feature that's no longer relevant, you can just abandon that branch as if it never happened. Alternatively, if you successfully complete a feature or patch a bug, you can merge that branch back into master. Git is a distributed version control system, meaning that each individual on your team has a full working copy of the project history. This allows teams to work on any number of features or bug fixes simultaneously without any concern of overriding each other's work. This won't be an all encompassing resource. Think of this more as a primer, just enough to get you started. I didn't mean to do that. So with that out of the way, let's get into the tutorial. All right, I meant to do that one. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is ensure that you have Git installed in your machine. It probably comes prepackaged as part of your operating system. But just to make sure, you can install this via Brew. I'm not gonna go in depth into the Brew package manager as we used this in a previous tutorial, creating your first Rails app. So I can just link to that section of the previous video tutorial if you need help there. To ensure you have Git installed, you'll run brew install git. In my case, I already have git installed. It's just a bit out of date. So let's run brew upgrade git to ensure we have the most recent version on our machine. The next thing you're gonna wanna do is ensure that you're inside the project you want to create a git repository for. In our case, we're inside our AWS Rails project. To initialize a new project, you're gonna run git init. To check the current status of your project, you can run git status. This is gonna give you a list of all of the changes that have occurred since your previous commit. Since we have no commits yet, all files are considered untracked. To add all these files to our repository, we're gonna run get add dot. If you would like to add individual files, you can instead of dot, replace those with the specific file names you'd like to add. For example, gem file or gem file with the wildcard or asterisk symbol to add both the gem file and gem file dot lock at the same time. But in our case, we just wanna add all of these files. So we're gonna add dot, which basically just means everything. If you run get status again, you can see all of our files are staged for a commit. Before we create our first commit, I wanna handle some of these DS store files. This is just a file that exists on Mac operating systems that can clutter up your repository. So I want to tell Git to ignore this type of file. So before we make our first commit, we're gonna open this up in Sublime. We're gonna edit our git ignore. The .git ignore file is automatically generated for you whenever you create a new Rails project. So if you've been following along from the create your first Rails app tutorial, you just have one of these by default. So we just need to add a few lines to it. Looking back at our staged files, you can see this occurs in many places, in the root folder, as well as in subfolders. To account for this, we're gonna just put an asterisk or wildcard character before .ds store. This will account for any path where we have a DS store file. So now that we have these commits staged, our git ignore won't be respected. So instead, we need to unstage these commits. So we're gonna run git reset. Then if we run git status again, you can see these files are no longer tracked and we have no commits. We essentially just undid our git add. Now that we've got our git ignore correct, let's add again. 
get add dot get status to check if our git ignore was used. Notice the absence of DS store files. You can add any files that you'd like to completely ignore from the repository history to this git ignore file, just like we've done here. Now that we've successfully ignored those files, let's create our first commit using the command git commit dash M and then single quotes. What this means is we're creating a commit. The dash M flag is a message. We're gonna give each commit a message so that when we're looking at our point in time history snapshots, we'll know what occurs in that particular snapshot. So in this one, we're just going to call it initial commit. Now, if you run get status, you'll see on your master branch, nothing to commit, working tree clean. What this means is that we don't have any changes since the previous commit. The next thing you typically want to do is to push this up to your remote repository before making a deploy. To do so, you type in get push. In our case, we don't have a destination set up, which leads us into our next topic, GitHub. I just wanna interrupt for one second and see if you're finding value. Please subscribe below, hit the like button, turn on the bell notification for, for future notifications of, of content like this. And if you are, we have a limited time offer our coworker here, Bear, will perform one trick per subscriber. Yes. Down. Yes. Roll over. Good boy. You're the goodest boy. Good boy. Down. Down. Oh my gosh. We're going viral, Bear. GitHub is a service that allows you to store your Git repositories in the cloud, essentially repository storage as a service. That's an oversimplification of GitHub as there are many aspects, including collaboration tools, issue tracking, automation, and continuous integration tools that we may dive into in future tutorials. But for our purposes, let's just keep it simple. So to push our repository up, you're gonna need a GitHub account. To do so, you're gonna go to github.com, sign up for your account and log in. The base service for GitHub is free, so this will cost you nothing to get started and is an industry best practice. If you have any intentions of working towards a career in web development, you're gonna have to know how to use version control. I'd recommend Git and GitHub as these are industry standards. Even if you don't plan on going full-time in development, it's just nice to use something like Git and GitHub especially considering that it's free since you can use this as off-site storage. If something were to happen to your computer or you wanted to use a different computer in a different location, that doesn't matter as long as your code was pushed up to GitHub. You can just pull it down to the machine you're on and begin working right where you left off. First thing you're gonna do is go over the repository section and create new. Next, we need to give our repository a name. In our case, it's going to be AWS Rails. You can give it a description if you'd like. Next, you have the option to make your repository public or private. Anyone can see the code in a public repository. So you just wanna make sure you know that going into it. Private repositories on the other hand are just like they sound. Only you and those you share this repository with can view the code within this repository. If you don't know the type of repository you'd like to make, just start with private. You can always make it public after the fact. Once we've made our selections, let's click create repository. Next, you can see GitHub has presented us with a list of commands. This will allow us to connect our local repository with the remote repository we just created in GitHub. Since we've already completed these first few steps locally, we're gonna skip down here to add our remote origin. This just tells our repository on our local machine that we're using this GitHub repository as our external resource. Next, we're gonna push up to our remote repository. Typically, you just run get push. You only run this dash u origin master on the very first push of a repository after creation. In every other instance, once you complete your commit, you'll just run get push to get that up to GitHub. Now that we've pushed our code up, let's flip back over to the browser and refresh. As you can see, our code is now in our repository. It's stored offsite and we can access it from any computer anywhere in the world if we need to but this is a private repository, so only those we grant access to can view and edit our code. In the next tutorial, we're gonna be using this newly created repository in our Amazon EC2 Ubuntu 20.04 Focal Fossa instance to deploy our application using Capistrano. As always, please don't forget to like and subscribe. This really helps out as we're a smaller channel just getting started here. If you have any questions or requests, please leave those in the comment section below and I'll see if I can help you out. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next AWS Rails tutorial.